Alright guys, so let's start learning about master detail flow. And what this is, is pretty much a new kind of way to structure the entire design of your app. Because what it is, is essentially a way to add a real quick menu to your app. And the menu is actually displayed differently on tablets than it is phones, because phones don't really have that much area to use. So in like two seconds, I'll be showing you guys a quick example, but for right now, start a new project and I'll just name this like master flow um I don't know that's good enough so master flow whatever alright API 8 looking good next and right here instead of just adding a blank activity scroll down to master detail flow and this is a better little demonstration instead of me just trying to explain it so this is what it will look like on a tablet if you're holding it sideways again a list of items would always be shown on a menu on the left hand side and whenever the user selected one of those things then the content or whatever they were trying to view it would appear on the right hand side now of course with the phone it's a little bit different because if you always had a menu sticking on the left hand side then you really couldn't see anything because there's not that much space so on a phone what happens is you have a menu that kinda looks like this with a bunch of items and the user can click one of those and whenever they do it transitions into just showing all the content on the full screen and of course if they ever want to pull up the menu again they can click back and go back to the menu so again a tablet always shows the menu on the left a phone you have to keep switching back and forth to it alright so now that you know the basics of it again select master detail flow and hit next Ugh, got like phlegm in my throat actually I'm chugging orange soda right now so uh, yeah not bad not bad alright so the first thing we need to tell it is this alright Bucky you're gonna have a list of items that the user can choose from what items are these well for this example what I'm gonna do is for the content I'm just gonna be displaying web pages because it's really easy to do and um, I don't know I just think it'll be a good demonstration so for the object kind I'll just write something like web page and for the plural I'll write web pages and this again you can name it any noun that you want um, this is just for naming conventions it doesn't you know affect your code at all if you name it something weird so name it like list items web pages again books if you're displaying like different books they can choose from whatever but anyways I'm gonna have web pages and click finish alright looking good so as you can see what it did already is it created a bunch of different files for us not just one Java class and one XML layout like before it actually created four it looks like pretty sweet and by default we have this one right here and this web page detail fragment popped up for us. Now another thing I want to mention is you don't have to click this I just want to explain something. So this two pane layout would be for something like a tablet. This just looks kind of weird because I'm using a phone as my example but this left section would of course be, be the list and the right area this is actually called the details pane. So if I just call it the main area or like the details area it's all the same thing so again the list in the details pane so I just didn't want you guys to get confused with my terminology so the first thing I actually want you guys to do before you start working on the layout or anything is go in your app Java under your package you're gonna find a directory called dummy now what this dummy is if you expand it you're gonna see that there's one Java file in it so just go ahead and click that and let me drag it to the left and as you can see by the comments it says this is just a helper class for pretty much creating really quick uh, templates um, essentially what this is is it's just an example class and it has some sample menu items right now so the list just says like item 1, item 2, item 3 and of course you would never want to use this whenever you're making a real app again it has like kinda of bad naming conventions and everything but just for understanding the basics of a master detail flow it's really good for modifying and demonstrating so open this file dummycontent.java 
And of course, if you scroll down, you're going to see a class called dummy item right here. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to be making a list of items. Now each of those items is going to be a dummy item object. So each list is an object. Now also, each item in the list is going to have a couple properties with it. These are the default properties, but I'm going to have our list have an ID, a name, and a URL for the web page. So we can keep ID since, of course, every one of our list items is, of course, going to have an ID. And I also want public string. I'll just name this like item name. And let me just copy this. And the last thing we need is the URL because whenever we click it, it needs to know what URL to display in the details pane, that main area. So after we created all our variables. The next thing I want to do is actually just change this little method right here. And what this is pretty much going to do is, well, I probably don't even need to explain it, but it's going to take whatever values we pass in and set it to the class variables. So I don't know, that's just normal Java stuff. So of course, the ID is good. Um, this item name set it equal to whatever item name we pass in and this URL we have to set it equal to whatever URL we pass in and of course we actually need to pass them in alright looking good alright so again one last time this class is going to be responsible for creating individual items in our list so of course these are the properties that each item is going to have and right here all we're doing is uh, I don't know this just assigning the values to the variables normal stuff and this last method right here string to string what I actually want to do is I want to return item name instead of the default content so that's all we have to do as far as creating individual items so now if we scroll back up we're going to see that we got some errors right here. So again, for the example, whenever it was creating items, it just used two pieces of information, an ID and something else. I don't remember remember what it was. But right now, our list items are going to have three properties, an ID, a name, and a URL. So of course, if we go up here, this add item is essentially just a method that creates a new dummy item object and we already saw whenever we created a dummy item object that was of course a list item simple enough so of course it needs three properties that we need to pass in and let me pull up alright so this is what I'm gonna do so the first one of course is the ID we'll keep that one two and three the second one was the name so I'll just name this one like um, Bucky and this can just be a URL to my profile if I can get my cursor in the right place alright so the next one can be a um, it will display the forum and the last one will display the videos page All right, so what is the URL to my forum? That. And let's get the URL to the videos page. Again, use any three URLs you want. You don't have to use the same ones as I am. All right, so again, what this bit of code does is it essentially creates three sample list items. And each list item has an ID associated with it. A name and this name is just going to be the name that appears on the list because displaying the URL look I don't know kind of stupid and the URL of course is so we can pass it in and it knows what to display alright guys so once you got all your housekeeping code written in the dummy content Java file we can actually hop over to the fragment web page detail XML file and we can start working on the interface or the design of it. 
Now remember what I told you guys this app is going to do is it's going to have a list and the user is going to select from that list what web page they want to view and in the main area right here all it's going to do is display some web page. So the easy thing about this is that we don't actually need to have any widgets on here at all like no text areas, no buttons, no sliders or anything. The only thing we need to do is somehow display a web page in here. So how do we do that? Well first of all delete every single thing that's in your XML file and since this is the only thing in here they won't just let you right click and delete it so you actually need to go to your source code and delete all of this. So I'm going to pause my screen recorder right now and type all of the stuff that I need to type in and then I'll explain it. So you guys don't need to watch me type it because it's going to take a few minutes. Alright so what I did of course this is just housekeeping stuff but the widget I added is this web view right here and actually if you go down it's this one right here. Now what this web view is is it's just an area or a widget that you can have that can display a web page. Easy enough. And also what I did is I know you can't tell because it's not giving me those grid lines but I set it to match parent both for the width and height and that way it takes up the entire screen size so whenever we display a web page in here it's going to display on your entire screen and not just a small section of it now another thing that I don't want to forget is I actually want to change the ID of this to I don't know I'll just name it like details area actually detail area that might be better alright now of course we need to do that because we need to reference it whenever we say hey this is the web page that you're supposed to display so now we got all our list items created and we have our interface set up with this web view thing that can display web pages so how do we say okay this is the web page that we actually want you to display well for the associated Java class for this fragment right here and that's this one web page detail fragment and this is the one that opened by default so as long as you didn't close it if you did it's right in here again this is pretty much a controller for that this area or this fragment and the first thing that we of course need to do is we need to say okay you need to be able to work with that web view so if you go to web why are you popping up web view why did none of that pop up it's weird what's going on here okay suspicious but we didn't get any errors right here so should be good to go alright so down here what you're gonna see is you're gonna find this method called on create view basically whenever you create this fragment this is the code that I want you to run now by default it's still set to that text view and remember we deleted that text view and replaced it with a web view so we can see web pages so delete this because we don't need it anymore and instead pretty much change it to web view and this is how you do that so web view root view why is none of this crap popping up it's kind of annoying me alright I'll just type it the hard way find view by id r dot id dot what was the id of that detail area and of course what this is essentially going to do is it's going to reference this right here this entire web view or this entire section so now once we have that reference the only other thing that we need to do is we need to call load URL and what this is going to do is of course take this web view and display a web page depending on whatever URL we pass in and this M item is the list item and this is actually like 90 percent of this is taken care of whenever we just click master detail view in the very beginning of this tutorial so that's why like we don't need to make M item manually or anything it's really easy however like I said this M item 
is going to resemble one of these objects, whatever one the user tapped. And of course, since this load URL needs a URL, we're just calling the URL property on this. So why that didn't autocomplete kind of annoyed me. And actually, we don't need this text view anymore, so we can delete that. So the last thing that we need to do, one more line of code, is we need to head over to the manifest right here. And again, what this is is essentially the manager for your entire app. It glues everything together. Now, since we're going to be using this web view right here, what this does, again, it displays a web page, and we're going to be connecting to the internet. Now, anytime you do that in your manifest, you need to say, hey, I need to request permission for the internet. So I'm going to type uses. See, none of this is popping up. Uses permission Android name equals Android permission dot internet. All right, so looking good in. If you ever go to uh, like the Google Play Store in your downloading apps, and right before you download it, it says this app needs um, like your location, access to the internet, and it says, and it pretty much asks you, is this okay? Can this app have access to like your camera and stuff? Well, this is how it gets all of those permissions right there. So pretty cool bit of information, and that's actually it. So now what we can do is run this bad boy and see if it works. Alright, so here we are. Again, this is going to look a little bit different on a tablet. This menu right here would constantly be stuck on the left hand side, but since this is a phone, we get the list on one screen and the content on another screen, so I'm just going to click Bucky and it displays my profile. Pretty sweet, my beautiful face. And of course, if we ever want to go back to the list, then just click this button again. And now you can choose something else, such as videos. And it will display that video page. Pretty stinking sweet. So again, that's the very basics of how do you create a master detail flow. I know a lot of people were wondering what that thing was whenever we chose blank activity as every um, like project setting. So now you understand Hopefully you guys can make some pretty sweet menus now, so thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and well, I'll see you guys next time. Alrighty, Hosses, welcome back to another video, and let's go ahead and start learning how to create an overflow menu. Now, an overflow menu is that menu in the top right corner with the three little dots that you click, and it gives you some options. You guys have used them all before. You probably didn't know that it was called an overflow menu, though, and if you don't have that toolbar, at the top of your preview then all you have to do is click this button right here and change the app theme to I don't know something like hollow light that'll work actually someone asked me how I got this icon right up here before they actually asked me on my website they thought like I loaded in an image or something and all I did was just chose a new theme and also material light it's another good one but as you can see choose any of those and you're gonna have that option to create an overflow menu in the top right corner with either three little dots or sometimes there are three little squares so whenever you click this a little menu is going to appear and for this example what I want to do is I'm just gonna have three items that say I don't know colors like red green or yellow I'll just pick three colors off the top of my head and whenever you click one of those choices it's gonna change the background of your app to that color. So that's kind of the standard tutorial that everyone does whenever they're learning how to make these overflow menus. So I figured I might as well just stick with that. It's a really easy example. So the very first thing I want to do, of course, since this app is eventually going to be changing the background color, is we need a way to actually reference this. So let me just delete this first because it's annoying me. And if you guys want some text to look at, then I'll drop a large one in there. But that little one, I don't know. I just hate that little plain text view for some reason. Anyways, kind of losing focus right here. So we need a way to reference the background of this. Of course, we can just use the relative layout because the layout is essentially the entire 
layout right now. It's a pretty boring interface, but whatever. So we need to give an ID to this layout. So name it anything you want. I'm just going to name mine main view, hit enter, and then later on in our Java code, we can reference it through the ID. Boom, simple enough. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and start actually creating the menu items. Now if you guys are like, oh, okay, this is going to be a pain. I'm going to have to like go in here probably and import some stuff and type this long, crappy, stupid thing. Actually, you are in luck because all of the functionality to create the overflow menu is built right in by default. Now if you go to your resources folder and go to this menu directory right here and expand it, double click this main menu.xml file. What this is, is the design for the overflow menu right here. Now by default it has one item in it, so we can just delete that. But actually, before we do, I'll mention this. So, of course, your menu can have either one item, five items, however many you want. Now, each item that you add is going to be referenced by a new tag. So, you can add, you know, one of these, then you would have one option, five of them, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to add like three or something, and I don't want this, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete that, give myself some room to work with. Now another thing I want to mention is this. There are different types of overflow menus and actually you can see that whenever I deleted that item the overflow menu deleted because there's nothing in it right now but as soon as we add another item it'll display again. Anyways, the different types of overflow menus you can have are dependent on what you want to do. So if you're familiar with web design you can create something like a toggle effect or radio buttons so that only one of the options that can be can be selected and that's what I'm going to do in this tutorial. I'm going to create a group of three items and the user can only select one since the background can only be one color. So anytime you want to create this effect what you do first is you need to take all of your items and add them under a single group. So group and if you hit Android checkable behavior and hit single, what this does is it essentially says, okay, I'm going to be throwing a bunch of items in here, but the user can only check one of them. Cool, simple enough. So now let's go ahead and actually add those items. So item, and actually let me do it like this since we're going to be having a few attributes. So the first thing we need is an ID of each one because that way um, we're going to associate each item with an ID and a color and that way we can reference it so we know which color to use actually and everything isn't just all messed up. So I'm just going to, um, what can I give my, alright I'll just name it like menu red, that'll probably be the easiest. You actually only have to do this once then I can just copy and paste it. Alright, so order in category. This is essentially the order of how you want them to appear. App show as action. Never want to do that. So I'm going to write never. And the last thing, you guys can probably guess what this is. The title is the text that you want to display. And of course, we can either just type it in there like red. But it's proper to have a reference to a string. So I'm going to write string red string and it's given me an error because we didn't actually make that string in our XML file yet but we will in just one second actually I can do this save myself some time alright so now that we know how to create a menu item let me just save us some time and just copy that copy that copy that alright so the first one is red. The second one will just have like green and this is the second list item and of course our reference is that and the third one would be let's do yellow and of course this is the third item and yellow. So right now if we were to run this program what would happen is it's given us, we already know what that is. 
is we would have an option menu whenever we clicked it and a little menu would appear however whenever we selected one of those choices nothing would happen so we have the design taken care of but we don't have any functionality so before we can actually start working in the code we need to fix these little errors right here so open up your strings file and check it out so what did I name those so red string is that string reference and the value is pretty much the text that's gonna appear on the menu so I'm just gonna write red for the first one what colors did I have green and yellow green and yellow actually when I whenever I was like a teenager and I used to answer the phone I always said yellow instead of hello so you know that's a pretty stupid story <laughs> alright so moving on um alright so now all of our errors errors it's kind of a hard word for me to say errors now all the error is taken care of so let's head over to the main activity Java the first thing we need to do since we are indeed changing the background of this is actually have the ability to reference it so Android widget relative layout so now we have access to the background essentially now check this out we actually don't even need to create any new methods right here because if we scroll down this method right here on options item selected what this does is it calls this method automatically whenever you select an item from this menu right here so if you guys didn't know what it did before you do now that is the purpose of it and I hate when I don't have that extra space right there so anyways delete all these comments because comments are stupid and we're gonna add a little bit of code we can actually delete everything from in here might as well just start brand new so all right, let me adjust so we know what's going on alright so the first thing we want to do is we want to get a reference to that background right here so relative layout and what did I name it main underscore view main underscore view and set it equal to relative layout find view by ID and r dot ID dot main view by the way if you watch my last tutorial um you saw that my auto complete wasn't working it is now working again and I didn't do anything to change it so I wasn't really sure why it stopped working but it's working again so you know hallelujah alright so now we have a reference to the background now what we have to do is we need to say okay this method is obviously going to be called every time the user selects one of these options so therefore what we're going to do is we're going to test which item they selected was it either red green or yellow and then we set the background to that color so what I'm going to do is the easy you can use a bunch of if statements if you want but the easiest way is to actually use a switch statement now the item and this is just what gets passed into us because so we didn't have to make our own variable or anything so this is a list item and what I want to do is I want to get the item ID now what this does is it returns if I can show you the ID right here so either menu red menu green if you selected the green menu yellow if you selected the yellow simple enough so now let's start coding the switch and some line numbers make it look good alright so in the case that they select r dot id dot menu red what do you want to happen well the first thing I want to do is this if that list item is already checked and actually since I'm only going to be writing one line I don't need to include brackets or anything but item set check 
equal to false. Else, item set checked equal to true. Now after this, and pretty much the main me of this, is you take that main view and you set the background color to, in this case, it would be color dot red. Now, of course, since this is inside a function, we eventually need to return something. So we're just going to return true to let it know that we handled that event. And the cool thing about this is we can just copy it and paste it two more times. Alright, so the first one was for red, the second one is green, I think. So we need to change the background to green. And the third one was yellow. Yellow? <laughs> Alright. So essentially what this is going to do is this method is going to be called again every time the user selects one of the options from that overflow menu. Now whenever they do, it's going to pass in information about the item. Now what we are going to do through code is we're first going to check the ID of which item they selected. If it's red, then we're just going to um, make the appropriate, appropriate toggle functionality for the menu itself and then we change the background color to that appropriate color and return true um, pretty much to let Android know that we took care of the event and everything is working correctly. Now the last thing I actually want to do is I just want to add a default since this is indeed a switch statement. And by default I'm just going to return super on option item selected item. And all this does right here is it says, it's essentially saying okay an option was selected and this is just because if none, none of this functionality hits, then we obviously need to return something for the function so we don't get any errors or anything weird going on. So again, this is just a default functionality to make sure anything doesn't break. So now everything actually looks good. That's all we needed to do. And I got my emulator running, so let me go ahead and run this bad boy. All right. All right, so let's see red okay okay good so far green okay the moment of truth yellow <laughs> too stinking easy it actually works alright so there you go that is the basics of how to create an overflow menu thank you guys for watching um yeah that's all I got to say so uh well see you guys in the next video but if you want to learn about transitions and animations, then welcome to the tutorial. Alright, so there was my intro. I hope you liked it because it took me like eight hours to make that sick beat. So uh, yeah, transitions, aka we're going to learn how to move crap across the screen basically. And later on, um, aside from like basic animations, I'm going to be showing you guys something called scene transitions which you can pretty much take an entire scene and switch it for the user and it kind of plays into what we're going to learn later on pretty much these things called intents and it's pretty much how you change entire views for the user but anyways I'm kinda of overwhelming you guys I know it already way to go Bucky way to go so let's go ahead and get started with a new project here and I'm just gonna name this um Training, it's just short for transitions, so I'm just going to hit next right there. And another thing I want to point out, make sure that you're using API 19 for the minimum because even though it's not going to target all of the devices for this tutorial, we're going to be using some libraries and, well, just uh, compatible that way. So again, 19 unlike before when we were just using Froyo. Let's move up to KitKat. By the way, kind of ironic. Um, Christmas was three days ago, and my grandma got me a huge bag of Kit Kats. So, you know, what do you guys care about that? What am I even talking about? Anyways, so let's go ahead and choose Blank Activity next, and that's good right there. 
doesn't really matter what you name it. All right, so our interface is looking sweet. Let's go ahead and change this app theme to anything else. Let's do material. Let's do material dark. Let's uh, switch it up a little bit. <laughs> I forgot I named it Tranny. How did I forget that? It was like two seconds ago. <sighs> Gets me every time, aka one time. All right, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to delete this text view because, as you know, I hate it. And I'm going to drag a button here. Ooh, this one looks good. So let's drag that bad boy right there. And what this tutorial is going to do is it's going to essentially um, add a really basic animation to this button, transition, whatever you want to call it. It's going to take this button and we're going to move it in the bottom right hand corner. And I'll also grow it by a little bit or enlarge it, I guess you might want to say. And this is going to happen whenever the user touches anywhere on the screen. So pretty basic demonstration. User taps the screen, button moves to the bottom right corner, boom, roasted. So I know you guys are thinking, like, but Buck A, shouldn't you give these things ID so we can reference them in the Java code? Oh, you silly old English man. Yes, yes, I should. So the first thing I want to do is give this relative layout which is pretty much your entire screen in ID because we're going to be tapping that and we need to listen for taps so ID by the way this screen I tap that <laughs> uh, these jokes they keep getting worse alright so anyways <sighs> one second let me just laugh at my own joke a little bit more and done alright so I'll just name it Bucky's layout <sighs> that was a good joke though that was good, that was good. <laughs> and for this button, I am just going to name this Bucky's Button. Should name it Bucky's Butt, but that's a little bit immature if you ask me. So now we have a very basic interface, a layout and a button, and they both have IDs. And you know what, I'm not even going to fix this because don't give a F about this string resource. You know, I'm just feeling like that today. So now that we got that taken care of, hop over to your Java code and let's start importing everything we need. The first thing is view.motion event and point Android view dot view import what did I do wrong? I always write in prot Android view dot view group there you have view group uh, uh, uh. import Android widget and of course we need to reference the relative layout uh, 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 uh. alright so now that all this nonsense is taken care of let's go ahead and get to the good stuff the first thing I want to do is I want to get a reference to my entire layout and it was named Bucky's layout and this is of course because before we can move the button what we want to do is just wait and see whenever the user taps the screen so therefore that's why we need a of course we did this before just a reference to this layout and once we have that we can hop down to on create and below set content view let's set up a listener so Bucky's layout set this equal to view group all right so view group find view by ID and let's go ahead and find our layout r.id Bucky's layout so on this layout what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set on touch a listener and new relative layout on touch a listener and within here we have to implement the method public balloon on touch so this is essentially gonna wait to see whenever the user taps that layout and whenever they do it's gonna call this method right in here now within this method we're gonna be writing quite a bit of code it's actually not quite a bit it's like 10 lines maybe but the codes gonna be responsible for moving this button now since this is already getting pretty cluttered and it's like way indented what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this over to a new method called new button or excuse me move button and we're going to be making this right below there but before you do make sure to return true to let your app know that okay we handled that touch event so now 
just for the sake of cleaning everything up, let's go ahead and make that, hold on a second, itching my eye, and now I'm itching my nose. Okay, now I'm done. All right, so public void movie button. That'll be interesting. All right, move button. And of course, to move the button, you probably need a reference to the button. So view Bucky's button and set it equal to vine view by id r dot id dot Bucky's button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be breaking this transition up into two steps. The first step is just positioning the button. We'll put it in the bottom right corner. Now the second step is changing the button size. So it's going to move to the bottom right and it's also going to grow simultaneously. So let me just add some comments. Change the position of the button. And we're going to change the size of the button after that. Now even though we do it after it's all going to appear to the user like it's happening at the same time. So in order to change the position of the button, what we're actually going to do is we're going to go to relative layout, layout params, and position rules. And this is actually going to be a really long line of code because you need to add this stupid thing like all the time. All right. So new relative layout, layout params, and inside here, relative layout, layout params, wrap content, and let me just do this. You actually pass this in twice. I'll explain what it means in just a second. All right, so just so you guys can see what's going on. So this right here is pretty much the rules on how we want to position um, items within that layout. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap everything up. So it's pretty much just a nice tight package. And now, with that package, the first thing I want to do is I want to add a rule to it. What do you want to do? Well, relative layout, align parent bottom, relative layout, yada yada, true. And by the way, this is going to make a lot more sense if you just pretend like this relative layout word is not there at all. So for example, you're just wrapping the content and you're aligning it on the bottom. So pretty much you're wrapping up the button and sticking it on the bottom. Now another thing I want to do is just real quick add it to the right as well. So align parent right. So all this code is going to do again is it's going to take the contents of this layout and stick it on the bottom right aka position the button right here. Pretty simple but they made us type this 600 times because they thought it was funny so you know you got us that time so after we make all those rules what we have to do is we actually take that button and set layout params to position rules simple enough so the only other thing I have to do after this is change the size of the button now the reason that we can't do it right here is because these are the parameters for the layout itself now what we actually need to do for the button is put view group layout params there I go and I'm just gonna name this size rules since this was gonna be responsible for changing the size so for Bucky's button there's a function called get layout params and what this does is pretty much just gets information about whatever you call it on it's essentially returning information about the button itself so now, one of the pieces of information is, of course, the width. So now we can access it through size rules and set it equal to, set it equal to like uh, 450. I think that'll look pretty good. And also, let's change the height. So size rules, height, set this equal to why not 300? Sounds good. Now, of course, just like before. You need to take Bucky's button, set layout params, which pretty much mean use these rules. What rules do you want to use? Well, just the size rules. So essentially, we made some rules on how we should position it. 
set those rules, made some rules on the size of it, and set those ones as well. So now let's go ahead and, you know what, I forgot to start my stupid emulator, so let me pause this and start it up. Alright, so here we have it. Let me go ahead and tap the screen. And our button moves to the bottom right, it grows, and, hmm, see that's weird. See, I thought what was going to happen is we were going to have a nice, smooth animation instead of it just instantly hopping from the top left to the bottom right. Well, lucky for you, to do this, it takes like two seconds. So if you ever want to just use a simple transition to either move it around or change something instantly, that's what you do. However, making a nice smooth animation is probably the easiest thing you ever learn. So let me go ahead and hide this. And the first thing we need to do is we need to import one more thing. Android dot transition dot transition manager and then after this what we want to do is we want to scroll all the way down to move button and we're going to add one more line of code and that's this transition manager which is a package that we just imported begin delayed transition and we're just going to pass in Bucky's layout now this is pretty much going to give us the default transition and let me just run this real quick now again, what we can do is we can add some more parameters to give us some more control over our animation. What this is going to do is it's essentially going to take your layout and look at the very first state of it, which is the default one that looks just like this, and the ending state, which is going to be the button in the bottom right, and it's going to just guess what transition you want. In other words, it's going to use the default animation of sliding the button down and growing it. However, if you ever want some more control over the details of our animation, then I'm going to show you guys how to do that in the next couple of tutorials. But for right now, um, this default transition will be fine. So once this bad boy loads up, let me just click it right here. And as you can see, it now slides down in the bottom right instead of just hopping instantly. So there you go. There is your very basic tutorial on how to make transitions and animations again in the next tutorial what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you guys how to have a little bit more control over the specifics of your animations so thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time alrighty guys welcome back to another video and in this tutorial I'm gonna start teaching you guys about something called intents now an intent is essentially how you can have one activity launch another activity in other words, what I'm trying to say is it's how you can have your app switch screens. Because most of the apps you design, it's going to be more than one screen or more than one activity. And the way you switch between them is called an intent. And there are different types of intents, but I'll cover everything in just a few tutorials. So for this application name, I'll name it like intent example. Why not do that? So intent example next. And I'm switching back to API 8 make sure we have all the devices covered since this is actually um, one of the core things that you know you need every single phone to be compatible with it and we'll just start with a blank activity but of course we're eventually going to be creating another one because you know that's the point of this tutorial to learn how to transition between the two so click next and I'm gonna make one activity named apples and I'm gonna make another activity named bacon and we're gonna be switching between the two so just I kind of like naming that because A and B, I don't know, it's kind of easy. It's better than just naming something A. All right, so I'm going to name the first one Apples and finish this up. All right, very nice, very nice. All right, so the first thing I want to do is get rid of that text view and actually go ahead and select your relative layout and let's make sure that this screen looks a lot different than the bacon screen. So I will say that this is a green apple, so I'm going to change the background of my relative layout to 009900. Make sure you have that pound sign in front of it and hit enter. I actually like this color green. I use it on my website a lot. So we'll say that this is the green apple activity. And just so we are clear, drag a large text out front there and just set the text of this. two apples and hit enter 
Now, of course, we need something that the user can do to say, okay, whenever I do this, I'm going to switch to another activity. And for this, we might as well just use a real quick button because it's the easiest thing to do. Let me just position this stuff a little bit prettier. All right, so this button will change the text of it to um, go to bacon. All right, and actually, let me get rid of this extra crap so we have some more room. All right, so now what I should probably do is change the IDs of this. All right, so the ID of this can just be like apples text. And the button will just give it an ID of apples button. So pretty simple. We made a real quick activity, just has some text saying what activity we're on. And eventually whenever we click this, what's going to happen is the user is going to switch activities. However, for that to be possible, we actually need to hop over to our source code view. And instead of just going in our class and making a huge big listener, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add one more element to this, um, or one more attribute to this button element. So if I go to Android on click then remember you can write something on here like on click and then you just make an on click method right here and you don't have to make a listener or anything like that so now we can just make this method eventually and easily listen for button clicks I don't know it's like the really lazy way but it works so this activity is looking good right now so let's go ahead and make that bacon activity and if you want you can fix your little string resource little warnings but I'm not really worried about it alright so now we need a bacon activity so in order to do that remember just go to your Java folder right here and in that main package where your apples Java file is just right click it and select new activity blank activity pretty much adding another activity to our project so I'm just gonna name this one bacon and make sure that you don't have the launcher activity selected because remember our apples one is the very first one that we want to appear this is just going to be an extra one so hit finish and let me organize everything alright so now we have the apples java bacon java apples activity already designed now let's go ahead and design the bacon activity so delete that text view right there and for the background of bacon I happen to know that the color of bacon is 72231F so that ladies and gentlemen is the color of bacon this is actually the first thing I learned about computers before I even learned to turn on my computer I learned the hex color of bacon so now you do too alright so let's drag just some text on the screen and let's change this text to bacon just so we know what activity we're on in case I don't know maybe someone's colorblind or something now just so I don't forget I'm gonna change the ID to bacon text and of course what we can do is we can add a button as well plop that baby in the center and change the ID to bacon button and our let me change the text for that button too actually I'll just leave it the same since I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to click this button and open up the bacon activity and it's gonna be the same you can click this button and go back but once you guys know how to do one you know I'm not gonna reteach the same thing over and over again so alright now that we got that taken care of what we can do is just so you guys don't forget is let me go to my apple design source code or the xml file and i'm just going to add that on click to that bacon button too and that's just so if you guys ever want to be able to click this and switch back you can alright so looking good we have two activities switch those both to design view Make sure you have an ID, Apple text and Apple button, bacon text and bacon button. And once you 
have your designs ready, you're ready to start writing code. Alright, so now all we have to do is we need to write a little bit of code, it only takes like five lines, to say whenever you click this button, go to this activity. So hop over in your apples.java file and we need to import two quick things. Import Android. Did I spell import right? Oh, I did for once actually. Content.intent. And that's so you can actually use intents. And of course, import android.view.view. Tighten this up a little bit. And of course, remember, since all we did is we created this on click attribute on the button in the XML file. We don't need to add any listener at all. We can just jump right down under uncreate and public void on click. So again, this is the method that's going to be called whenever the user clicks the button. Simple enough, easy wheezy cheesy. All right. So the first thing we need to do is actually let me type this first. So intent i new intent this bacon class. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is we need to create an instance of the intent class. And this is just the way that Android switches between activities. So in order to do that, it's just like creating anything before, but the only parameter we have to look at is this is the activity that you want to launch. Of course, we only have one other one, the bacon class, so simple enough. So pretty much just set up an intent that say that pretty much says this is the activity we want to launch simple enough and now the only other line of code is to launch it and the method to do that is start activity and this launches an activity and now says okay well what one do you want to launch well we only made one and it points to the bacon class so just pass i in right there so how easy is that now if my emulators nope not ready yet so I'm gonna wait a second and actually while that's booting up I noticed that there's one more thing that I forgot and that is we need to throw view view through this on click alright now let me go ahead and run this and here we are so of course our apples I say apples apples activity is the first one that launches and when I click go to bacon hopefully sweet it goes to that bacon activity and of course if you ever want to go back and do the same thing make bacon go back to apples it's the same exact technique I mean I don't wanna waste your guys this time and showing you guys the same thing over and over again but what I do want to show you now is something else and that is what if we want to take a piece of data from the apples activity and whenever we switch to the bacon activity we want to send that data along so what would be a real life example of this say that you had a messenger app and of course all of your friends were in a list and you also had another activity where you could write someone a message well what you wanted to happen is you wanted to click on one of your friends maybe their profile picture and then it would say okay you're writing this friend a message or if you clicked on another friend you would write that friend a message so what you need to do is you would actually need to pass some data along from one activity to another and to accomplish this it's actually really easy so what I'm gonna do is if you go back to your apples activity right here add one let me get rid of this alright so add just a plain text field right here drag it anywhere on the screen and I'm just gonna set the width of this to like 250 dp so the user has something to type in and we'll just run this example real quick well first of all let me give this an ID alright so I'll name this apples input and we'll say that the user can type something in here I don't know maybe like a name of their friends or something and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that data and we're gonna send it along to bacon and then we'll just print out whatever they typed right here so again a real quick example but it'll teach you the basics of a very important concept so again make sure you have an input so we can get some data from the user and name it apples input so now hop back over to your apples.java class and import 
android.widget.editText, and that was, of course, that input field. All right, so scroll down to onClick, and now what we want to do between these two little lines of code is essentially get the text from that input. So final edit text, I'll just name it apples input. Remember I like naming my Java variables the same as whatever that ID was. So now of course edit text, find v by id r dot id dot apples input. So now this is just a reference to that input field. So now what we want to do is actually get the data or get whatever text they typed into it. So string, I'll just say that, I don't know, it's user message. We set this equal to apples input dot get text dot to string. So that's going to take anything they typed in, convert it to a string and store it in this user message variable. So now that we got that taken care of, the only other thing we need to do is we need to figure out how we transfer it to bacon activity. And it's actually really easy. Anytime you have extra information that you want to pass along to another activity, you call the put extra method. Now the put extra method takes any extra, extra information in the form of a key value pair. So the first parameter is, okay, what do you want to call this piece of information? And I'll just name it like apple message now the second part of course is what information do you want to pass along and of course the user message so eventually we're gonna say okay switch to the bacon activity and when you do pass along the user message whatever they typed in and just so they can um, you know have the ability to print it out or whatever they want to do with it we'll just reference it with the keyword apple message so pretty sweet so now that we're passing it along, we need to add the functionality in bacon.java to handle it. Now all bacon.java is going to do is it's going to pretty much take whatever message and set it as the text right here. Simple enough. So let's just go ahead and import android.widgets.text view because that's the only thing that we need to reference. And of course it's going to allow us to reference that right there. Now the code for this, we can actually just stick on on create because this is a code whenever you create or launch this activity. So the very first thing I need to do is I need to allow this class the ability to accept extra information. And in order to do this, you actually just call bundle and I'm just going to name it apples data and the method for this is get intent get extras so essentially what you're doing is you're getting any extra information whenever you get launched from somewhere so this is gonna call the intent this is the extra information and any extra information we're just gonna store in Apple's data simple enough so now what we have to do is actually want to test something first so we'll say if Apple's data equals null in other words there's no data I don't know maybe this got launched from another activity or maybe you don't have any data for a reason maybe they just didn't type anything in whatever then what we want to do is we want to handle it appropriately and we can just return because of course you don't want to try to change this text if there is no text to accept so that takes care of it make sure that we never get any errors or anything like that however if it gets passed through that test that must mean that the user gave us some extra information so the first thing I want to do is just store this in a variable and what did I name that Apple message so I'm gonna make a variable called Apple message and of course this is equal to Apple's data get string and the parameter that you need for here is that keyword so again this is the keyword or the key but it's actually going to be equal to the value which is whatever they typed in like I love Bucky 
that's something that a lot of people are probably going to type in because it's so awesome and I am the coolest dude in the world. I should just talk for like 10 minutes about how awesome I am. Oh, Alright, rambling again. Alright, so the next thing I want to do is of course just get a reference to this text view and set it equal to our newly formed variable. Simple stuff here. So text view and I'm in a bacon text and set this equal to text view. Find view by ID r dot id dot bacon text. And of course you guys already know what all this does. Bacon text. If you ever want to change the text on something, you just call the method set text. And of course remember that Apple message is essentially the string that the user typed in. Simple enough. So now let's go ahead and run this. Alright, now just let me type something randomly like Bucky is awesome. Go to Bacon and check it out. What it did is it took that text and it passed it along and a pretty cool app. So we got apples to bacon, Bucky is awesome, tomato tomato. So now we pretty much know the basics of intents, not only how to switch, let me get rid of this out of the way, from one activity to another, but we also learn how to pass information along with it. Pretty stinking sweet. So there you go. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time. All right, guys, welcome back. And in this tutorial, I'm going to start talking to you about broadcast intents and broadcast receivers. Now, it's a little weird concept to understand at first, but essentially, what a broadcast is, is when your app sends out a system wide message kind of like a radio broadcast it doesn't really have any specific target it's just sending out this really broad message now the reason that this happens is because you can make other things called broadcast receivers and whenever your broadcast receiver says oh look at that that message is something I want then you can make your app do whatever I don't know like whatever functionality you want so what we're going to be doing in this example, I know it's kind of like hard just for me to like talk talk about it and explain it, but in this example, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making two entirely different Android projects, and these projects are going to essentially communicate with one another. So how cool is that? Before, of course, we could do things with different classes and stuff, but never before have we created two entirely different projects and have them be able to communicate with each other. So go ahead and start a brand new project. This is going to be our first one and I'm going to name this one um, send broadcast. So one of the projects is going to act like that radio tower. It's going to be responsible for just sending out that um, system-wide broadcast. And their other project is going to be like, hey, I actually want to do something whenever I got that message. So, you know, that's what's going on. So click next that looks good right there next and we want to set this one is a blank activity sweet alright so for the activity name um, we can just leave it as main activity right now it doesn't really matter alright so here is our very first activity and our very first project so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add one button to the screen and whenever we click it it's gonna send out that broadcast to the entire phone to anything that's listening for it and in another project we're gonna set up a, it's something called um, a broadcast receiver it essentially is just gonna listen for this specific broadcast and then we'll just I don't know like print out some text on the screen or something so the first thing I want to do is just add a button and I'll change the text of this button to send broadcast I also want to change the ID of this to send button and the last thing I want to do is I want to add a real quick, quick on click function and this function we'll just call it send out broadcast not broadcast broadcast alright so three attributes and again this is an alternate way to essentially add this right here 
So again, whenever we click it, it's going to call this method send out broadcast. In this method, it isn't included. We're going to have to write this in just a second. But essentially, like I said, what it's going to do is it's going to send out a system wide broadcast to your entire phone. Whatever's listening can uh, perform some kind of action. So now let's hop over to our main activity. And let's just go ahead and import all the stuff we need to import. So Android dot content dot intent and I spelled Android wrong so make sure you don't do that and of course import Android dot view dot view alright so the only thing that we need to do here is we need to build one method and that method is send out broadcast because that's the only thing that this activity and this project essentially is going to do so public void send out broadcast view view so the first thing we need to do is we just need to make an intent so intent I it said equal to new intent now I remember before I said whenever you make an intent intent generally what you do is you put some kind of class in here and then it looks for that class for example, remember we had that baking class in the last tutorial and it just pops it up into a new screen. However, this is a special kind of intent because it doesn't have an explicit um, class or another screen that it's going to call. It's just going to kind of broadcast a weird message to anyone that's listening. So that's why we don't need to throw a class right in there. So after this, what we need to do is take that intent and call a method on it called set action. Now for right now, just copy this package name right here and throw it in here as a string. Now the reason that we need to set action on all of our broadcast intents is this. Say that you have a bunch of different programs on your phone and they're all sending out these broadcasts. Well maybe we want to uh, make a program later on, but it only wants to listen for broadcasts from this application. So again, if we have like a hundred different, or not a hundred, that's unrealistic. If we have like 10 different apps and they're all sending out broadcasts, well, we don't want to listen for all of those. We only want to listen for this broadcast, for this intent. So the set action is essentially a keyword that, I don't know, it's like, this is the keyword for this broadcast. That's essentially what it does. So another thing that I want to do real quick is something called add flags and intent flag include stopped packages now you don't really need to um, memorize this just make sure you have it in there every time it's just because they change the Android operating system and just to make sure that this intent broadcast is compatible with all versions of Android you need to have this so you know that's kind of their fault nothing that we did so the last thing of course in order to send that broadcast you just send it out just like that so now as soon as we click this button what's gonna happen is it's gonna call send out broadcast and what send out broadcast does is it's just gonna say okay I'm sending out this broadcast can anyone hear me this broadcast is going out to the universe I'm sending it out so of course that's what it does in in the next tutorial what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting up something called a receiver in a brand new project and it's going to accept this or wait for this to happen and then we'll just make something cool happen whenever it occurs alrighty hostess so that is actually all we need to do for this project so the next thing I want you to do is go to file new project and we're going to be making like I said an entirely different app for the broadcast listener or receiver so I'm just gonna name it what was my last one send broadcast oh. receive broadcast and that's good that's good now another thing I want to do is I'm just gonna choose add no activity so again this is just gonna be a listener so we don't really need a screen for it and click finish alright so we don't have an interface or any design but of course we still need somewhere to write some code so expand project and expand app Java and in this first top package right here remember that's where we put all of our Java files so right click it 
and choose new other broadcast receiver since that's all this is it's a program that receives broadcast simple enough now for the class name I'm just gonna name it receive broadcast and make sure that both of these are checked by default and click finish so what it does is it builds us pretty much a generic class to receive broadcast so eventually we're gonna be listening for these broadcasts and whenever one occurs and we actually accept it what do we want to happen well all I'm gonna have happen is we're just gonna print out a little message on the screen it's called a it's kind of like um, a quick little notification or a pop-up you may be familiar with them you'll see whenever we do it but in order to do that we actually need to import android.widget toast and this imports a piece of toast so if you open up your CD drive in your computer right now you're gonna see a piece of toast in there alright no, I'm just kidding this is for the pop-up now like I said this on receive method is going to be called whenever we receive that broadcast that specific broadcast that we're listening for so what do we want to happen whenever that message gets sent out and we listen for it and hear it well all I'm going to do is make a little pop-up appear on the screen so it's toast make text which pretty much means make pop-up and the parameters three parameters we gotta pass in the first thing we have to do is pass through this context the second one is the string that you wanna appear pretty much uh, for your pop-up and I'll just write like broadcast um, has been received alright now the third one just write toast length long and this is the duration of how long you want the pop-up to appear for so it's either you have two options long and short so we'll just make sure it appears on the screen for like I don't know the duration of this it's not long it's only like five seconds maybe so alright this looks pretty good right here and this is actually the only thing you have to do for whenever you create a receiver to receive broadcast messages now of course how does this know to listen for this specific broadcast because this was our original broadcast that we created and remember I told you guys there may be a bunch of different broadcasts going on in your phone a bunch of different things sending them out in order to identify each one we gave it essentially a keyword so this is the keyword that gets tied to this specific broadcast whenever the user clicks the button so in your other project we somehow need to say listen for broadcast with this keyword now in order to do that we actually go up to the manifest file and click Android manifest XML now of course this is the manager I say of course a lot it's kind of annoying probably so <laughs> alright so this is the receiver and where we can manage everything now what we need to do is we need to add something called an intent filter this is pretty much going to say don't just listen for any broadcast we need to filter out these broadcasts to only listen for specific ones now inside here is where you write which type of broadcast you want to listen for so if you write action in Android name then what you can do is you can paste your keyword in there so now this program is only listening for broadcast intents with this keyword aka the only one that we did and that ladies and gentlemen is it we set up our broadcast receiver and whenever it receives a broadcast with this keyword it's gonna call on receive aka make something pop up on the screen so the first thing we have to do is we need to run this and whenever we run this check it out I don't know if you guys can see but one thing I want to make sure you guys do is click launch default activity you see how this is the default well we don't want to launch this at all because this is just a listener it doesn't have any screen associated with it or anything like that so we're gonna click do not launch activity and then click run and what's gonna happen is in our emulator you're not gonna have like before whenever you tested an app and an activity popped up and then you can click something that's not gonna happen because whenever you run this 
all it does is it starts listening for that broadcast to occur. So now if we go to our other project, send broadcast, then we can run this project, and this is just for the other one. Alright, so now we got that listener. So again, go to your other project, the one that could send out a broadcast, and just run this bad boy too. Now, whenever we click send broadcast, nothing happens because why are you not? Oh, it is because I am a moron and <laughs> all right, I essentially made a toast, which is that pop up, but I forgot to actually show it on the screen. So <laughs> let's try this again. All right, so hopefully whenever we click send broadcast, Check it out. This is that little toast I was talking about. Broadcast has been received. So there you go. And take note of this. Remember, first of all, remember to include your show method. But check this out. The program to send a broadcast is this. And the program that prints out that little message is an entirely different system. It's this broadcast receiver and this is that little message. So how sweet is that, that we're pretty much communicating between apps, between different programs within our phone? All right, Hosses, in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start talking about Android threads. Now, as you guys know, threads not only can help speed up the performance of your app, but they're going to be used in a lot of different things in, you know, concerning Android development later on. So it's a pretty important concept. And I'm sure that everyone already knows about threads from my Java tutorials, but just a real quick explanation. As you guys know, computer programs, they run from the top down. And they run pretty much in a nice order, A, then B, then C. You give it a list of instructions and it does whatever you say. Now the only problem with that is, say that you have three instructions, A, B, and C. And B, that middle instruction, is, I don't know, maybe the user clicks a button and your app is going to perform some weird long calculation. Well, since your program is performing in a nice order, A, B, and C, that means that C has to wait for B to get done. So if the user clicks a button and it's making some calculation, then your app is going to appear to be frozen and the user isn't going to be able to move anything around or switch activities or click anything until it's done. And what's going to happen then? They're probably going to get ticked off close out of your app, rate at a 1 on Google Play, your app career is going to be destroyed, and uh, you know, you're just going to have a bad day. So that is why we're learning about threads, because I do not want your life to be destroyed. Alright, so what I did is I created a brand new project, and I just chose all the defaults of blank activity, nothing weird or anything like that, so this is where I am right now. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of this text view and I'm going to drag a large text in the middle of the screen and what can I write? Actually let me drag a button too. So essentially what this program is going to do is we're going to click this button and first I'm going to show you guys what happens when you don't have threads. It's essentially going to try to make some calculation, freeze up and pretty much <laughs> I'm going to be breaking the app on purpose and then I'm going to be showing you guys when you use threads how awesome it is. So for this button we'll just write something stupid like click me we'll say touch me that's a little bit more perverted maybe touch me baby there we go so touch me baby and this text um what could say hello not that perverted but whatever alright so for this text view I'll just give it an ID and I'll just name it Bucky's text and for the same thing for the button I'm just gonna give this an ID of Bucky's button alright now the last thing I want to do is for this button make sure you have it selected and go down to on click and I'll just write something like we're gonna call a method called click Bucky's button. 
So that way we don't have to set up a listener or anything weird like that. And of course, if you want, you can take care of your string resources right there, but I'm not really worried about it, aka I am lazy. So hop over to your code right here, and the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to create this program without using any threads at all, the improper way. So another thing is make sure that you have your emulator started. Boot that bad boy up. And okay, let's go ahead and import android.view.view .view and import import android.widget.textview. So actually, how can I do this? All right. Now under here, let's go ahead and implement that method whenever you click the button. So public void what was it like? Click Bucky's button, I believe. Throw your views in there. And the first thing I'm going to do is this is going to be the dumbest program ever because we're just going to have a button in the middle of the screen. And again, this is for performing large calculations, but I really don't want to make any worthless calculations. So all I'm going to do to take up a bunch of time is I'm just going to have the system wait pretty much just wait and do nothing for a certain period of time and this is just going to simulate I don't know maybe like going to a database and gathering some data or maybe figuring out some high score or something or any calculation that takes a considerable amount of time it's what it's going to simulate so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get 10 seconds into the future so if you just make a variable called future time you can do this by going system dot current time and this of course is the time right now well not right now whenever you run it it's gonna get the current time and we're just gonna add 10,000 to it now this is 10,000 milliseconds so that means that future time whenever this program runs is going to be 10 seconds in the future so now we're just gonna make a real quick while loop and we'll say while system dot current time milliseconds is less than future time what do we want to do well the first thing we're gonna do is called synchronize and I don't know if um, I tell you guys about the synchronized keyword in my Java tutorials I, I made those like a few years ago but what synchronize essentially does is it prevents multiple threads from bumping into each other or essentially trying to do the same thing it uh, I don't know, kind of synchronizes it. It's a pretty good keyword. I actually think I did teach this because I remember it. But um, again, we don't really need this for right now since we're not using threads. But later on, we're gonna have it. So I figured I just might as well write it right now. Now inside here, we're just gonna have the easiest try block ever. And check this out. All we're gonna do is wait. And we're gonna stick future time minus system current time milliseconds and it's giving us an error because we didn't catch anything so we'll just catch an exception and we won't do anything with it because I really don't care alright so all this code does right here essentially is it just waits 10 seconds and you if um, your emulator is running a little slower or something, you can change the time of it right here. But 10,000 means 10 seconds. So again, this would obviously be some kind of calculation. You would never want to write this actual code in your app just to wait and do nothing. But for simulating some kind of calculation or background process, it's perfect. So after 10 seconds, after the user clicks the button and waits 10 seconds, what we can do is we can just change this text field right here. So text view, Bucky's text, set equal to text view, findbr.id.bucky's text. Uh -uh. And of course, once we have a reference to that text field, we can just change the text on it using set text. And I'll just write like, nice job, Haas, whenever they click the button. So now let's go ahead and run this bad boy. And again, this is what's going to happen. Let me kick this, get this started first. So the user is going to click the button, and 
they won't be able to do anything for 10 seconds because it's trying to perform this bit of code first. That means that the button's going to be frozen, they aren't going to be able to switch activities, nothing is going to be allowed for the user to do. Oh, that's nice, mate. Look at this app I just got. It's, uh, it's this app, and you touch this button, mate, and it changes the text right there. I mean, this technology is incredible, so let me just touch this button, and, huh. Oh, it looks like it's frozen, and it ain't letting me do anything, mate. I'm just waiting here for 10 seconds, and, oh, I can't click it again, or do Oh, well, there we go. Well, that was kind of a pain, so I guess I'm installing that right at one star on the app store and whoever developed it is probably going to be fired from their job oh now we got this thing oh mg alright so this is another problem you got whenever your apps making a long calculation in the background it says it isn't responding do you want to close it you know what this app sucks completely it takes too long it freezes up so what we're going to do is if you want to learn how to fix all of these issues then watch the next tutorial where we are going to be taking this program and making it work beautifully alright guys so in order to make this app more efficient what we're going to be doing is this we're going to be taking this bit of code which again remember simulates uh, some long calculation and we're going to say okay take this bit of code and instead of just running it on the main thread on the main program go ahead and stick it inside another thread and do it in the background. So take this, go off somewhere else, perform your calculation, and leave the main program to go about its business. So that's all the thread is. So let's go ahead and learn how to do that right now. And let me give myself some space to work with. All right. So essentially, remember, and I really don't know like if everyone knows about threads or not, but what you do is you create something called runnable now this runnable object inside here you can stick code that you're gonna put inside a thread so of course let me just type this first probably be easier runnable there we go alright so as you can see auto completed make sure you have your semicolon at the end there so whenever you make a runnable object or a runnable class inside this run method is essentially what code do you want to stick inside your thread what code is going to take a long time that you want to run in the background well it's this bit of code right here so I'm just going to cut it and paste it right in there so now we have a bit of code that we can stick inside a thread again you need to put it inside a runnable object and that's just um you know that's just how Java is set up now another thing I want to point out is this make sure that you do not stick this bit of code inside any thread any runnable object or anything like that the rule is whenever you're making Android apps you never want to change any interface element update the interface at all within a thread in order to update the interface or change the user's view we need to make something called a handler and I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that in just a second but anyways to finish this thread up right here again we stuck all of our code inside runnable right here and now we need to stick it inside a thread so I'm just gonna name my Bucky's thread and you set it equal to new thread with your runnable code inside there so again you can actually have multiple threads with multiple bits of code and whenever you call them they can run all at the same time so you can actually have three different ones right here and it's actually depending on your computer or your device how many threads it can run at the same time but essentially you can have four different chunks of code all running at the same time instead of just top down one at a time like we learned before so this creates a new thread and the one last line of code you need to do is you just need to start it and it essentially just starts performing this bit of code so let me just cut this and I'm gonna run this bad boy right now alright so check out what's going on so far so again remember I cut that code to update the text right here so the text isn't gonna update but whenever we click the button 
it's not freezing like before. It doesn't have to wait 10 seconds, even though inside this click Bucky's, Bucky's button, we have code to just wait 10 seconds. So it's not freezing up. It's allowing us to click it over and over and over again. Pretty stinking sweet. But of course, to complete this program, what we want to do is we want to allow it to update the interface, change this hello text to what did I have on it? Like nice job or something. So let's go back to our project and let me just tighten all this up. I think it just looks better that way. All right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to import Android dot OS dot handler and import Android dot OS dot why do I keep reading OS dot message there we go so in order to update the interface what we do is we create something called a handler now remember I said the rule is whenever you want to update your interface you can't do it within the thread it's bad practice and the reason you can't do that is because a thread is essentially something that you can have multiple things running of at once so if you have a bunch of different stuff trying to update your interface then it's gonna well first of all it can crash your program second of all um, you know it would just be stupid if one thing is trying to change this hello variable and another thing is at the same time it's just bad programming practice even if it doesn't crash your program so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a handler and the handler I'm just gonna name my handler you can name it anything you want set equal to new handler and this is going to be chilling on your main thread so again this is pretty much part of your main program and inside here we're gonna just gonna call alt insert to call a method here it is handle message right there so again a handler is essentially just part of your threaded application that sits on your main thread and it's responsible for updating the interface since those threads aren't allowed to simple enough so delete this code right inside here and I actually have that copied still I think let's see what's on sweet so inside here you can just put that code to update that bit of text right here so now you're thinking alright well how does it know when to call this handler and update this little bit of text well we add a, have to add one line of code and that goes right here alright so after your calculation is complete what you can do is you can take that handler and call send empty message now I'll talk to you guys about sending messages to the handler later on but essentially what this does is it just calls the handler that's all you guys really need to know for now that's how you use handlers again you can take messages and pass them along but whenever we create apps that do something other than you just click a button and wait for something to happen then it's gonna make a lot more sense but for now let's go ahead and run this and everything should be working perfectly alright so check it out I'm gonna click this button right now click and this text is still gonna take 10 seconds to update because that's what we told it to do but in the meantime the app isn't frozen I can still click this button I can still use other parts of the app and of course when it's done the handler changes it perfectly so that ladies and gentlemen is the benefits and the power of using a threaded application again anytime you have any hard work to do then just stick it inside a thread and of course you can just use the handler to update the interface and well pretty stinking easy and your apps are going to perform a lot better so in their future tutorials I'm going to be showing you guys some other cool stuff that you can do with threads and you guys are going to be app developer pros in no time so for now thanks for watching and well see you later alrighty guys welcome back and in this video I want to start talking to you about something called services now a service is a process that can run in the background of your app 
So it's pretty much a chunk of code that can run and it doesn't interfere with the users, you know, just using the app or anything like that. And also, a service doesn't have an interface. You can't, um, you know, make an activity or any buttons to go along with the service. It's just a chunk of code that runs in the background. So why would you ever want to make a service? Well, say that you had, I don't know, maybe a social network app that was constantly checking for new notifications. Or maybe you had a messenger app that was always checking for new messages. Well, of course, these are just things that run in the background and you don't need to, you know, click a button that say, okay, check for new messages now. Okay, check for new messages now. Or else it would be kind of annoying. So that's what a service is. Um, another thing that they're really good for is downloading images off a website in the background. So again, now that you got the idea, what I want to do is show you guys how they're created. And what I did is I pulled up that Apple's bacon program that we made earlier. And that's just because I'm going to show you guys that whenever you create a service properly, it's just a chunk of code that runs in the background and it doesn't interfere with the user experience. You can just put a button on the screen or something. Just anything that you can interact with to essentially demonstrate that, okay, the service isn't interfering with user experience at all. So, actually, we can close out of these. We really don't need those files. We're not going to be editing those at all. So, again, I'm going to keep my apples and bacon Java files open just so you guys see what's going on. Now, the first type of service I'm going to show you guys how to create is called an intent service and in order to create this go to your main package right here and right click new and add a new java class now I'm just going to name this Bucky's intent service and click OK and we'll just pretend that this service is for downloading images off the internet although all I'm going to do is I'm just going to print out a little um, bit of text that says like uh, the service is running or something but we'll pretend that this is for downloading images off of like I don't know maybe we made like an Instagram type app or something like that alright so whenever you make a new intent service there are a couple rules that you have to follow the first rule is you need to have a constructor in here and that's just kind of for housekeeping and the second rule is you need to have a method called on handle intent. Now inside that method is where pretty much whatever you want your service to do, that's where the code goes. So remember those two rules and let's go ahead and import everything to make it work first. So Android app intent service because that's pretty much what this class is doing and Android content intent. There we go, it already knew. Alright, so in order to make this class this intent service we actually need to holy caps lock inherit from intent service so now once we do that again the first thing I said is public actually I wonder if there's an autocomplete for a constructor there we go alright so here's my constructor right here and of course the only thing that you have to do is you need to pass the superclass the name of this class and that's just um, the rules for Android to make sure it works and you actually don't even need any of this because we aren't using any parameters and we can get rid of this as well now the only other thing that we need to do is we need to put an override method in and that is called if I can find it called on handle intent if you guys see it let me know oh here it is on handle intent so again this is just housekeeping stuff this is saying that this is indeed an intent service or service and in here I'll just write like um this is what the service does so this is pretty much to m meet the most important part so for now since we don't want this service to actually do anything what I'm going to do is I'm just going to import android.util.log and this is just so I can print out a log message right here so we can see that this is actually working now in order to do that we already did this before so you know nothing new 
So private static final string tag. And remember, you set this equal to whatever your package name is. And this is just standard. You know, I'm not just like making this up. You should name it tag, and you should set it equal to whatever your package is. And now, of course, whenever you want to log a message, just call log dot i. And the first parameter is that tag. And the second one is what message do you want to output down here? And I would just write something like uh, like the service has now started. All right, so that's all this service is going to do. Of course, like I said later on, you might may want to like check some database for updates or download images or see if you got any new chat messages in here. But for right now, just print out a message. Oh well. So after this, what we need to do is we need to hop over to the manifest, and in our manifest, we need to say, okay, we actually are using this service right now. So if you go right above application and right below activity because this is well it's just where you need to put it if you throw service and the name that you put in here is just the name of your class and where did my manifest go alright so make sure you put dot in the name of your class and that's it and this just registers a service with your manifest in other words it tells your app hey we got the service so you know that's that so pretty sweet let me just okay messed everything up awesome alright so we registered with the manifest we created a service looking good looking good now the one last thing that we need to do is we need to actually start this service because remember I said a service is pretty much some kind of process that runs in the background but it doesn't just start by default whenever your app starts you have to kick it off manually so in order to do that we can just head over to apples.java and we'll just throw it right on this on create so whenever this app gets created it's going to kick off that service now in order to do that intent I'll just name it intent and set it equal to new intent and the parameters are of course this and if I can just copy this it's pretty much like any other intent actually come to think of it alright so now we have an intent which means we intend to la launch some kind of class and that class is this service or this background process right here easy wheezy now anytime we want to start service you just call start service what do you want to launch well how about that one right there alright pretty stinking sweet so now as soon as this app starts it's gonna launch this service and the one thing I actually forgot to do is set up this log filter because this is gonna print out log messages but as you guys can see there are crap load printing out right here and this would indeed print them out but it would print out all these other ones as um, well so of course what we want to do is we want to filter out only the ones that we care about so copy this and hit editor edit filter configurations and I'm just gonna make a new filter called like Bucky's filter and throw that right in there alright so that's a little bit cleaner so now let me go over to apples again and kick this baby off alright so check this out it says the service has now started in other words this service currently right now would be doing something like downloading images off of the internet but check it out I'm gonna click it it goes the bacon click it it goes the apples essentially we can have this service running and it doesn't interfere with the user experience so now you guys are probably wondering alright well you told me in the last tutorial that computers run a list of instructions in a nice neat order so how is it that we can be having two different things happen at the same time well you know in the last tutorial I showed you guys how to manually create a thread and you can put code in there to run at the same time as your main program or your main thread well whenever you create an intent service 
it automatically creates a thread for you. So even though we don't see runnable or thread or anything like that, it does it all for you behind the scenes. So that's a pretty cool aspect of intent services. It automatically takes your service and it kicks it onto another thread so it doesn't interfere with the user experience at all. So pretty stinking sweet. We now got images downloading and it doesn't even interfere with any of that. So in the next tutorial, what I'm going to be showing you guys is another type of service. And <clears throat> all right, you know what? I'm going to explain it then because my throat is uh, dying out here. So, well, anyways, I'll see you then.